So you want to learn how a simple sponge like this can make a city skyline so much easier? In today's video, I'm going to show you exactly how coming up. How are you going there guys? I'm here from Paint and Pino giving you some top tips for all things art and design and today we're going to show you how just a really simple gadget like this. This is just simply a little slither of a sponge that I've got for my kitchen and how this can really speed up painting a skyline of a city just because of the actual shape that it gives you. So we're going to produce a step-by-step -step video today on how to produce a really awesome city skyline coming up. So the brushes we're using today are a 25mm decorator's brush, a fine detail size 6 and a palette knife. And then the colours we're going for are just obviously all the white and black. Um, we're going with the warm yellow and the warm blue, but crucially the cool red. And I'll explain why that's so crucial in a moment when we start to mix the purple. So as always I've already pre-primed the canvas and now I'm just mixing together the cool red with that warm blue. Now, the reason this is so crucial is when you come to mixing purple, you've got to choose the red and the blue. So you always get variations of every primary color, but generally it is a rich, uh, sorry, a warm or a cool. So for example, the warm red has a hint of yellow in it. Now, if you actually mix all three primary colors together, you get brown. So I've actually made a whole video of color mixing, which I'll leave a little link below. But here, if you want to get a perfect purple, you've got to choose the red that doesn't have the yellow. So that is our cooler red, which has a hint of blue in it. And then the warm blue has a hint of red in it. And they're the colors that are gonna give us this gorgeous purple color. So it's quite dark when it first goes on. Obviously, I've got the primer in the background, so it's gonna make it a little bit lighter, but I'm just adding a bit of white in here now and you really start to see that gorgeous purple colour coming through. So the top I've gone is slightly redder, just where the sky is going to be um, for this beautiful sunset over the city. And then just down at the bottom you can see it's slightly uh, sort of more of a hint towards the blue-purple. So in terms of the actual sky and the blending, blending paint really is one of the hardest tricks you can do in acrylic painting. So the trick is to have your primer in the background still wet. It really does help us blend those paints together. So I'd actually want to try and get a bit of movement in the brush. I don't want it to be completely blended so you really get a sense of that sky in the ocean or rather it's the river of course coming through. So now I'm going to be a bit careful. We're just adding in some of this warm yellow. The reason you've got to be careful is, of course, as I've just said, if you mix the three primary colours, you're going to get brown. And we don't want to have a brown sky and river in this painting. So I'm just being wary of where the yellow goes. And I'm actually going to show you what happens when you make a mistake in a moment, because it will go pretty yucky and pretty brown. So I'm just going to put a bit of the white acrylic through the middle to give that gorgeous reflective horizon line. You actually want it to be quite white or light where the city skyscape's gonna, city uh, skyline's gonna go rather, so that you get that lovely contrast with the silhouetted buildings. So I'm just adding a bit more of the red now to give a gorgeous orange glow, but still being wary that I'm not going into that purple. So this is what I mean when you make that mistake. So if I go into the blue, so now I've basically got three colors mixing, I've got brown. So the beauty with using a palette knife, of course, we can just swipe it off and start again. So I'm just going to put a bit more of that purple through. And then I'm just going to carefully blend. So you can almost see the division line there. So it's going to go from the purple to the orange, but I'm just going to put a bit of the, the white paint just to blend the two together. Keep blending it through whilst it's a nice wet brush. So again, you want to have some movement with the uh, the paint. You don't want to over blend this together because we want to have a nice sort of painted feel to the, the sunset. I'm just going to make it a bit white on this side here, just to give a nice contrast. Ooh. What happens when you overwork your paint, your canvas falls off. And then we're just gonna go back onto that red. So this time I'm being mindful of when I'm working into the purple, it's a little bit dry now anyway, I'm just gonna keep blending this through so it's gonna be subtly become that purple bottom, bit of the blue through. Keep blending the two together. 
but at this stage there's no yellow on my brush so we're just going to get that lovely purple coming back through. Alright, so onto the palette knife now, we're just going to add the horizon line. Palette knives are brilliant for doing those lovely fine detail lines with, so it's just it's a nice way of, of sketching out exactly where the buildings are going to go. Now here's the sponge. So this is the trick, uh, as I said earlier, these are brilliant. So we're just going to drag the paint down. And they really do actually enable the paint to go a long way. This is just um, one of the main buildings in Perth has quite an unusual 45 degree angle roof. So I'm just trying to suggest that at the bottom. So I'm going to use this sponge for all of the reflective buildings and some of the actual main buildings as well because it really does help you with those straight lines rather than worrying about a fine detail brush the whole time. But you do need a bit of pigment or else it can come across a little bit crusty. So I'm just working on with the grey. I'm going subtle at the moment. I don't want to go too dark, particularly in this lighter area as well. So I'm just taking the, um, the grey, which has actually got a hint of the blue through it as well just to give it a bit of a nice contrast. All right, now we want to blend this in to give the reflective area. So this is a dry brush, as you can see. So we're just going to take that across the wet paint and you'll get these lovely streak lines going into the lake or into the river, rather. So it gives that sense of reflection. All right, so with the actual buildings, I'm just using a flat brush, a flat head brush. The trick here is always when you get in that straight line is you're just going to drag it. So you can see as I put it on the canvas and drag it down, you get that gorgeous, sharp, dark edge. This technique is particularly effective if you're trying to get a contrast. So I've loaded a bit of black on one side, a bit more white on the other, and you get that nice contrast. Blend that through. Again, this is the building that has that funny roof. Now I know this, this is uh, Perth, this is my home city, but of course this works with any, with any cityscape that's on a, a river or on a lake or on an ocean where you get that gorgeous reflection coming through. You know, so you can use this technique for, for any skyline. I'm just gonna work the uh, building details through now. So again, similar technique as using the flathead brush. I'm just adding some of the foreground buildings into here now. So just a nice contrast of lighter buildings and the darker buildings in particular really give a bit more depth now to the city skyline. So I'm just working along the actual horizon line here. And it's really lovely when you get that contrast of the dark and the light buildings on top of each other. So the important thing really in this, I mean, you want to you want to vary up the brush strokes so you're not being too repetitive with your building shapes. It's just giving a suggestion here of, of buildings in the foreground.
And then here we're just adding a little bit more detail through those reflections and some of the buildings. So maybe where I lost some of that definition earlier with the sponge, I'm just going to add that on now with the, with the flathead brush. So you do this with both darker colours and, and the lighter colours as well. Alright, so now we're just going onto the fine detail brush. So we're just going to work in some of that detail into the buildings. You know, most buildings will have some kind of aerial or you know, like roof sort of air conditioning unit. So you're never going to get a flat roof. It's quite rare. So you can just sort of improvise um, to a point. This is, this is one of the feature buildings here in Perth. Um, it's got quite a beautiful, spectacular um, tiered roof so obviously the higher up you go like the CEO's office is right in that corner so he gets the hold of the top floor to himself but it's quite a dramatic looking building one of the great things about living in this city is we have the most remarkable sunsets we're quite lucky in terms of the sunshine that we get so we're trying to really show that in this painting just with those deep vivid colors that we get so just adding a bit more detail now to these buildings a chance with a fine detail brush as well just add a bit more definition if you want to have some darker sides to the buildings. Just a little hint of colour through here. This one of these buildings actually lights up with crazy colours at night, so I'm just giving a suggestion of that. And then just to finish off here, this is, um, we call it the BHP building here in Perth. It has um, quite an unusual kind of almost scaffolding type roof to it. It was actually voted our city's ugliest building for several years in a row. It's one of the newer skyscrapers, but as with everything, it becomes part of the scenery and people become used to it pretty quickly. And then here I've just gone back to my palette knife. I'm just adding some of those reflections now. This is where those the lines come in really handy. So just a bit of the yellow onto the white and just giving some nice streaks and it really brings out that reflective quality to the water on the, on the foreshore, on the foreground. So again, make sure they're not too repetitive, just keep them varied. Some longer than others, some, some thinner than others. Nothing in nature is generally perfect. Some little hints here. And then just to finish off, just a little bit more definition where the, the actual foreshore meets the water. 
just gives it a little bit more depth with that highlighter. And there you have it. So there you have it guys, I hope you've enjoyed today's video on how easy something as simple as a sponge like this can make a painting really effective. If you have enjoyed the video then please do hit that like button just below as it really does help our channel. And if you'd like to see some more weekly top tips just like this one, then hit that subscription button just below as we do do weekly videos. Alrighty guys, we'll see you next time. Happy painting.